Well, hey, McFly subscribers. So I am doing another update video. Um, and this one's gonna start out a little sad. So we, uh, we've been struggling a little bit with our, our dog. We have a uh, five-year-old Australian Shepherd. Her name is Zoe. And about six months ago, maybe a little less, uh, she started having some ear trouble and she was kind of, um, kept on kind of turning sideways or scratching it or doing whatnot. And so we, you know, we took her to the doctor and the doctor looked at it and thought maybe it was just kind of some kind of cyst, uh, burnt it off. And then a month later it came back. So we took her back in and he burnt it off again. And that kind of went on for a couple months. And actually, I, I don't know if you remember, but I did a, a video where I was actually taking her to the doctor. And that was actually one of the, the first times we took her in for the surgery. And they just burnt it off and said that it was probably a cyst. So we just took her in uh, last month. He didn't think it was a, a cyst. So he, he removed the whole thing, he actually did surgery and cut it out rather than burnt it. And when he removed it, it was a it was a tumor type thing that was about this big. And you know, he said probably at her age, you know, it's probably benign. It's probably no big deal. Don't worry about it. See how she does. Keep a you know eye on her. And and you know she's healed up good. It was about a month ago. Started healing up well. But then I noticed uh, another lump because um, they shaved her down. She's got long hair, Australian Shepherd. They shaved her down. And um, there was another lump starting to grow just right around here, like right below her ear. I was like, that's weird. I called him. He said, well, um, give her a little bit of time to kind of recuperate and then bring her in. And during this time that we were waiting for her to recuperate, we found a couple others. So one started growing on the back of her head um, and one started growing on the other ear and another one on her, her uh, chest, another one kind of down, you know, in her... Uh, sensitive region, um, and a, a few other places. Um, she started getting a lot of these, and and the one on right here, which is the first one we saw after the surgery of the one inside her ear, um, started getting really big. So we literally today um, took her uh, in for another surgery. He had t taken a look at it a week ago and said, let's schedule surgery. Took her back in, and um, and he removed it, but because of all of them, he took a look a little deeper. He actually kind of cut it, uh, took a look inside of it, and uh, he says that he's pretty sure it's cancer, which is sad for a five-year-old dog. Um, he's got to send it out to the labs just to make sure, but we won't know for another week. I'll bring her in just in case you guys didn't see that other video. You can take a look at her. She's got a shaved side. She's got some surgery, so... She's a little out of it because she had it this morning, but let me see if she wants to come in. Hey, come on, up, up. Oh, hey, here's Zoe. And you can see she had, oh, oh, I didn't mean to hurt you. Are you all right? She's a little sensitive. I didn't touch the bad part, but she's always worried that she's gonna get bumped. Our three-year-old keeps on bumping her. So she's really worried, but she's kind of out of it. She's a little, little groggy, and you can see it's kind of bothering her. But anyway, she had a few of them cut off, one on her neck down here, another one up on top of her head up here. Um, there's another one down on her back, one on her chest. You're a good girl. All right, you can go if you want. But I thought I'd give you guys that update. I know that you guys had saw her. Uh, some of you had asked how the dog is doing over the last couple of uh, uh, months and and uh, really I didn't quite know and I just said she's doing good um, but it seems like she's not uh, so we'll see we'll see how she uh, how she does and we'll see what he says when the when the labs come back um, but she's only five we have a three-year-old this was, she was basically our first child kind of in a way it's a little depressing we're sad you know hopefully it's not that but if it is um, you know, we'll, we'll see. He says there might be some treatments, um, you know, uh, but we'll see how it goes. We'll see, uh, 100% we'll know next week. And I'll, I'll do an update on that next week so you guys will know. So I, if you guys could pray, uh, 
you know, it would be d uh, tough for the family. She's kind of part of the family. She's a good girl. A little hyper at times, but not right now, of course. She's all drugged out, but, um, you know, she's, she's a real good girl. She's, she's a sweetheart and really good with our kid. I mean, he's, he's three. He pulls on her hair, he beats her up, and, and she just kind of takes it. Sometimes will look at us like, you ain't gonna do anything about this. But she will, she's never snapped, never done anything. She's just a really good all-around dog, so you guys could give a prayer out for her and our family, and uh, it's just a dog, but... You know, it would be it would be tough for our three year old. He he wouldn't really understand. So, so let's move on to uh, some other stuff. Um, last time I made a video, I did some uh, reviews on some products that I liked, um, and a couple of you had asked uh, to give some kind of heads up on products I didn't like, uh, didn't want uh, that they shouldn't that you guys shouldn't buy. Unfortunately, I don't have a lot of them here um, because usually if I don't like it, I don't. I don't keep it. Um, I kind of toss it or whatnot. We've moved a couple of times um, in the last couple of years, and if I don't like something, I'm not keeping it. Um, more recently, I had bought some Tippet, and Omco is a great brand. That's not that's not the problem with this Tippet, um, but I bought it from an online source, and they were, they were cheap. They were like seventy five cents a dollar each spool, and I was like, heck yeah! So I bought a whole bunch. I actually had a lot more than this. Um, when I got it, you know, I didn't think anything of it. I threw it on, I started using it, and um, I hooked into a bass. This was back in California, up in Napa, and there's a little lake that I used to fish, and it was like a, it was a good sized bass. It was like a two and a half pounder, which isn't bad on the fly. It wasn't huge, but I was fishing a five weight. I was fishing smaller poppers. Um, actually, I might even still have those poppers. So here we go. I was fishing these little poppers. Uh, they're kind of more bluegill poppers, but where I was fishing, it was kind of like bass and bluegill I was catching. But a big blast bass inhaled this thing. And actually, it was exactly this fly, um, but it was a different one, of course, because I, I lost it. Um, but I had a couple of these. Um, and I've got a bunch of these little poppers, kind of the same thing. Um, I, got, I got these cheap. I think there was a discount for them um, at the place that I got, and I got them like a dollar each. Good deal. I had this two and a half pound bass, roughly. It was just boom, you know, on my five weight and just inhaled it. And I was, I had like a, I want to say it was a larger, I think it was a four X or three X tippet, you know, and I, I set the hook, I had them on and then snap it, the line snapped. I was like, what the heck? Um, and then, so I, I grabbed another one and actually a different color because I, I didn't have multiple of the same color at that day. So I grabbed another one, I think it was this, the bumblebee one, um, and I had a bluegill hit it. And this is the first time I was fishing this tippet. I had a bluegill hit it, and it wasn't big, and fought it for a minute, and sure enough, snap. I was like, what the heck? And then so I started tying a few knots with it just to test, and I would go like this, um, and snap. And so I tried it with all of them, and it just snapped. And it's not Umqua. Umqua is not the problem. They make a great quality tippet. Um, I usually like Rio better just because they're stiffer, they're tougher, um, so if you nick them on rocks, they're just a little better. Omqua is very soft. It's not as abrasion resistant as Rio. Um, still great, um, really good for like dry fly fishing. But I'm fishing nymphs a lot out here and, and, uh, and you know, I'm getting nicked on rocks and whatnot, so I fish Rio out here. Out there I, I liked Omqua because it was the type of fishing I did, it was uh, a little better. Now, I buy a lot of stuff from this place, but I bought it from, uh, I actually have their app on my phone, uh, Sierra, Tra uh, Sierra Trading Post. Great. I mean, they, they sell a lot of great stuff at good prices. Um, usually what it is is it's uh, like old models. So it's last year's models. You know, let's say Sportsman's Warehouse or, you know, um, Big Five or whatever. Uh, they bought too many, they can't sell them that year, and they decide to get rid of them, they'll dump them off to, I believe this is their business, what they do, they dump them off to um, a Sierra Trading Post, and then Sierra Trading Post will sell them at a, at a steep discount, and, you know, you can get really good stuff, even waders and whatnot for cheap. The thing is, you gotta realize last year's models, well that's, that's kind of what happened with this tippet, I think what it is, is it's old tippet, and it snaps, and so, you know, you tie any, Let's do a quick, uh, so that one is 4X that I'm using here. You can see, 
Of course, now it's even a year since that, so I'm sure it'll be worse. I really only use this now for, like, filming my flies, because I'm not, you know, tugging on anything. Um, so I'm not wasting my other tippet. So, there's a dropper, dropper loop, and I barely pulled in snaps. Um, really weak, actually. Forget the... See, it's strong without, without the knot. As soon as you tie a knot, it snaps. Um, so there's something wrong with that line. So fair warning, when you're buying line online, <laughs> um, be, be careful. Make sure you, you talk to them and find out how old the line is. Um, in fact, I recommend not buying Tippet online. I also recommend not buying Tippet if there's like, you know, at, a, at a, any store, if there's like dust on it or whatever, um, if it looks like it's been sitting there a long time. You want this to be rather fresh and new because it, it goes bad to any line goes bad, it deteriorates over time and then can cause breaks. Now it seems strong, I mean, you can go into the store, pull out some like this and go, ooh, that's strong, that's good. Tie a knot with it really quick just to test it. I guarantee you, if it's old, it'll snap, okay? Uh, usually knots is what the problem is. So there's that. And again, I'm not knocking Umqua, that's not the problem, it's just old, okay? So if you've had lines sitting for, for a year, um, even your own, and, and you haven't fished with it, and you've still got some, replace your spools, tippet spools, every year, and your leader. Um, you don't want to go with bad st with old stuff. So here's another uh, product that we have that I bought that I don't like. Actually, I didn't buy this. Um, my father was gracious enough. Um, he really likes my videos, and he wanted me to improve on them and he's like man get a 4k camera and I was like I'd love to I just can't afford a 4k camera he looked online and he's like hey you know what let me get this for you it's like seventy dollars eighty bucks or something like that and it's a knockoff brand a Chinese knockoff brand of uh, of uh, GoPro and I was like cool well thanks dad you know that's really nice of you you got it for me as a as a gift um, I think this last Christmas and he's like, use it for your videos and make your videos better. I was like, awesome. So I took it out um, and I got the right, I made sure I got a 4K um, uh, SD drive for this. Took it out and pressed start. And I was out fighting fish. I went to film it, um, press start, turned it on. Let's see if I've even, I don't have, I do have batteries. So I turned it on, and I pressed start, and, well, it's working right now. But I'll tell you right now, I pressed start while I was fighting a fish, I had it on my, my hat, and um, I just kept on fighting the fish, I didn't want to lose the fish, right, so I, I stopped, and um, after I've caught the fish, I, I checked this, and it had frozen. And I could not turn it on, I couldn't turn it off. I had to actually pop it out. Um, so I'm gonna actually turn this off right now. Um, but I had to pop it out and then take out the battery just to turn it off. And it froze, I couldn't do anything. And I popped it back in. <laughs> this is not easy to turn this on and off. You gotta stick it back in the protective case and there you go, that was like 30 seconds. You can't do that while you're fighting fish, first off, and you don't have both hands, and you don't want to spend 30 seconds not paying attention to fighting a fish. So um, I was like, hmm. So I started testing it and um, turned it back on, pressed start, and it froze again. I was like, what the heck? I had to do the same thing, pull out the battery, put it back in, test it again. Then I turned it off to 4K mode, and actually that's probably why it started right now. So I turned off 4K mode, and it played, and it was fine. It didn't work. Not 4K. And sometimes even non-4K, so I kept on using it, and I figured, okay, I'll use it as non-4K uh, another trip. Um, and it would happen every once in a while non-4K. Uh, almost every time 4K, actually. Every time except for once. I got it to work once. And that was my video when I went and fished uh, and caught that big trout at those little lakes, if you remember that big video. Actually, I'll put a quick little link just because I like showing off that fish. I, I'm proud of it. It worked once there, and I was able to put it a 4K. Um, and just quick little little thing of it, and then of course, 
you know, two minutes into filming, it turned off. But at least I got a little little 4K footage. Looked at it, it looked great, but couldn't seem to get it to work. So, so that's that. Um, Eighty dollars, kind of down the drain. It's really not that useful, um, especially when it's an action camera. So you don't always have your hands ready. You need to literally just press a button, boom, and expect it to work. And it doesn't sometimes. Um, probably. 10% of the time with non-4K and like 99.9% .9 with 4K. It won't work. It'll just freeze and you have to reset it like I explained. So, by the way, it's a Casio, a Caso brand, so don't get that. Um, so let's get into some other things. I just got this. Actually, I, I had gotten this in the last package, my last video where I did the unboxing of the um, the vest and the gloves and the, I had forgotten to show you guys this. Um, I got a new, uh, so I never had one before, but a, um, cause my waders are kind of fit to me perfectly. I don't kind of need to cinch them up to keep them up. I never got a waiting belt. Um, but this one's actually pretty cool. So this I think was 10 bucks. I also got it on Amazon. Um, and I use Amazon a lot because I, it's easy to trust them. I, I've never had product. And if I get a product I hate, I just call Amazon. Amazon goes, oh yeah, return it. Um, you know, they obviously didn't you know, advertise correctly or whatever, or tell you that it was a bad product and they return it for you. So it's kind of like you're guaranteed um, with it. It's unlike eBay. eBay, it's tough to get your money back with eBay and I'll do it sometimes, but um, you can get great deals on eBay, better I think than Amazon, but you risk getting a crappy product and that's happened a few times. So I've gotten this waiting belt um, and why I like it is, I mean, it's actually pretty good quality. Um, Good straps, quality straps, they're not cheap. Um, but it's got these cool little things that I can actually kind of clip stuff to. So when I've got it kind of, you won't be able to see, when I've got it on, I can actually clip like my forceps to it, or um, you know, tippet spool, or nippers. Um, so that's kind of nice, it actually gives you a little more, if sometimes I go out and I'm not bringing my vest or whatnot, I'm just doing a quick little trip. I've done that before, and uh, it's kind of nice having the ability to do that. Uh, so there, there's that. It kind of frees up also some space on your vest too sometimes where, like a big tippet spool sometimes up here will stick out and then you're fighting a fish and it gets in the way. If it's lower, you have kind of a less chance of it getting in the way. So I'm pretty excited about that. Um, I'll put a link on the bottom where you can get that if you want. I think they were 10 bucks. All right, so, um, Another depressing thing that happened, kind of a little background. So when I make my fishing videos, they're not always that same week. Sometimes I make them a week ahead um, and then it gives me time to edit. So, all right. So as some of you guys know, uh, my dad was gracious enough to let me borrow his uh, camera. This thing's awesome. Shoot some beautiful, beautiful um, video and some great pictures. Uh, this thing is really hot and I've only been filming for like 10 minutes. It turned itself off and I turned it back on. Got to be able to talk for two seconds and it turned itself back off again. That's the thing is this is this is not really made to do long time video. And so now I'm switching over to the Canon that I have. Um, it's more of like a handheld. It's made for video. Um, but not as good a quality video. Um, I'm sure you can see the, the difference. Um, but anyway, um, this is what I've been filming some of my stuff on. Um, can't do my whole fishing stuff because a lot of times I set it and leave it and obviously it can only play for 10-15 minutes. I was filming for 20 but I would get up every 5-10 minutes, turn it off and then back on uh, to reset it but it overheated and it's turning itself off every like 2 minutes now. So where was I? Oh, so I do my videos, usually I'm about 2 weeks ahead. Um, I do a video every week um, but usually I, I'm, I'm filming two weeks before I actually release it, um, sometimes one week. Um, but that what it does is allows me to actually edit the video. Uh, the editing process is a long time, it takes me a long time, and I work a full-time job. I mean, I'm, I'm not, this is not my only gig. I, <laughs> if it was, we would starve. Um, but it gives me some time um, to edit uh, the fishing videos, which take a long time. The fly tying videos, I can usually pump one out in, in a couple hours. Um, but the fishing videos are a lot more editing. It takes me a long time. So I'm usually filming about two weeks ahead. I went out this last uh, week 
and I fished those rivers again where I caught that big trout. It was a great day, and I was like, I got to go back and fish those lakes. So I went back, and I was fishing with my Sage uh, Method, which is like an $850 rod. It's the only one I have that's that much. Usually most of my stuff is cheaper. I got that as a gift. Someone gave it to me as a gift, and I would never be able to afford it myself. Um, well, I could, but I would sleep on the couch probably <laughs> like a week or two um, or a couple months. Um, there's no way I'm spending that kind of money. I got a wife and I got kids. Um, can't, can't do it. But I got it as a gift and it was a really nice gift. Thank you. You know who you are that gave it to me. Thank you very much. I was walking and as you could see before, it's kind of like a sloped um, bank there that you got to kind of walk down. It's all gravel and stuff and to walk down to fish. I was walking down and I had already hooked one fish. Uh, it was like a 18 inch brown. I tripped and I fell and the tip of my rod must have smacked a, uh, a rock. I didn't think anything of it. Nothing was broken. I looked at, looked at it. I was like, hey, great. I dodged a bullet. It's not broken. And made one cast and it was fine. And I made a second cast and I was like, what the heck? That felt weird. And I looked out and there was a big splash at like, you know, 10 feet out. And of course I didn't cast very far. I was like, that's kind of weird. I look up and the tip is gone off my rod. Turned out that I must have cracked it. And then the stress of casting it just shattered. The, I mean, it, it cracked the, uh, the tip off. So I broke my $850 Sage. So that video you'll see coming up in two weeks. Um, I thought I'd let you guys know about that. I had said on the video, you know, we'll see if Sage will take it back um, and return it. They do have a policy um, about returning, and I'll let you guys know kind of how smooth that went on the next video, but I think it's going to be a couple of weeks. I know that they're a few weeks out, if they even do it. So we'll see. Hopefully they honor that. Um, I'm not going to count my chickens till they hatch type of thing, though. So we'll wait till they will actually get that rod in hand to see if they actually are going to give me the rod back um, fixed, you know, we'll see. I'll kind of give you guys updates on that in the next couple of weeks, but watch that video. It's kind of kind of fun video, um, kind of funny. It's always good to laugh at everyone else's uh, misfortunes, so you're welcome to laugh at mine. Um, kind of depressing. Lost my kind of only uh, streamer rod. I think I have an 8 weight somewhere that I might be able to use, but it's just so heavy and big. I like the six weight for fishing streamers for trout, but oh well. Uh, by the way, so ne one of the next upcoming videos I plan, I can't guarantee this will happen, but I plan. I've been tying up some carp flies. So I got this one. And they'll sit just like that for the carp. You can see the rubber legs move. I tied one in pink too. It's kind of the same thing, a little different. Uh, we'll see. Um, so last time I went down on the San Juan, which will be the next video that you guys see, um, there was like 30 carp. They were all visible. It was all sight fishing and all pretty close to me. I mean, there was this pool when I first came out, so it was a new spot I was fishing, kind of south of Texas Hole, a little down river. And um, I was walking through, I was wading through this area, and, and like I'm looking out, all of a sudden I see all these fish and I thought they were trout at first and I thought that's weird because it was super shallow, it wasn't very deep water and it was really muddy bottom and, and the, there was no current, there was nothing. I thought, oh, this is awesome, there's trout. As I got closer um, in casting distance, I realized they weren't trout, they were carp. But I, I had a three weight with me, um, I wasn't set up for carp and I just, and I didn't have flies, I mean I just didn't have flies for carp. I had like 6x line um, only, I think, 6x tippet. Wouldn't happen with the 10, I mean, these are all good size too, like 10 pound carp, most of them. So I want to go do that. So I think I'm going to bring my five weight. We'll see if that works out. Um, I'm not sure when high water is. I think it's already happening. So if it's too fast of moving water, the carp might be gone or to a new spot where I can't find them. So I'm not sure. I got to call them and find out if I can do that. I'm going to call tomorrow. Um, if it's even going to be high water, uh, but ha might be something I might do is try some carp. That would be fun. I've never done it before. I've never caught carp. So this is new and I've never tied carp flies, but I just kind of looked it up online. 
kind of like you guys watch my videos, I was watching some other people's videos, um, you know, just kind of came up with my own a little bit. But anyway, there's the update, guys. Um, it's, it's late, it's nighttime. Put my kid to bed after we brought our dog back from the vet. Um, we actually, after we brought her back, took a nice long walk with her, and um, she loves walks. She loves people. She just loves people and loves to eat, so we gave her a lot of food. <laughs> Gave her a lot of love, a lot of times, you know, it's a dog, and sometimes she gets needy, she's very, very needy, wants love all the time, wants to be petted 24-7, and a lot of times we're, we're finding ourselves, get away, go, go away, Zoe, you know, and uh, we didn't do that, we didn't do that tonight, uh, we petted her a lot, um, tried not to yell, tried to, you know, not tell her to leave us alone, and tried to give her as much love and affection as possible, because that's what she loves the most. You know, hopefully she's got some time. Um, you know, we got a baby coming. We got a baby coming in November. Uh, sorry, that's my <laughs> it's my boy's birthday, November. Um, August. Sorry, we got a baby coming August. Um, I hope that she can. She's good with kids. Good with babies. She was great with Eli when he was a baby, and um, we just you know we hope that she can make it through and you know at least meet our new uh, baby coming. Uh, which, by the way, I don't know if you guys, I told you guys, um, it's a girl. It's going to be a girl. So we're going to have a boy and a girl, which is kind of nice. Well, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, if you like this sort of thing, please hit that subscribe button down below. I've got three videos every week. A uh, Monday, which you're watching right now, um, update video, basically, or gear review. I basically, it's just kind of sitting here with me and, and chatting. That's kind of what, what my Mondays are. Every Thursday, I have a fishing video where I go out and fish. Um, and every Friday, I do fly tying. I have new flies. Um, if you guys are interested, let me know, and I'll tie up one of these on. We'll see. Actually, you might want to wait to see if it actually catches carp, right? Uh, so, but let me know if you want to see this one. I'll tie it up um, for video and put it up one of the Fridays. So, But yeah, hit that subscribe button if you like this sort of thing, if you like fly fishing or any kind of fishing. And um, again, please pray for our dog and our family. Um, no matter what, what it is, um, the prayer will help. So whatever the outcome is, prayer will help. Whether she gets fixed or just prayer to help us cope. And also, please, please um, go through all my subscribers currently. Um, I, I would very, you know, I appreciate every single one of you. Um, but the more views I get, obviously... The more times ads show up on my, my uh, channel and the, the, the more money um, I can make. And I put a lot of work, a lot of effort. I spend probably 40 hours a week on these videos. A lot of times I'm up till like 2 a.m., 3 a.m. editing, and then I got to wake up with my kid at 6 a.m. I got to do my other job, and it's just, it's tough. Um, so if you could share this with all your friends, uh, share my videos with all, all your friends, and share with... Um, you know, um, anyone that you know that likes fishing, um, that would really help. You know, the more more people I get watching, uh, just, you know, overall, the easier this will get. And the more I, I bring in, I, I don't actually keep any of the money. I usually, what I do is I go back in and buy camera equipment or fly tying gear or, you know, stuff for, for the videos, really. I gotta buy SD drives and hard drives and all this stuff to store everything and um, pretty soon my computer's starting to kind of wig and I got to get a new computer soon. And so, um, if you guys could just tell by sharing the videos with everyone, you know, um, it would really help. So I do appreciate everything guys. I appreciate you guys watching and, and I appreciate, I appreciate the prayers and, and everything. So, all right, well, I'll catch you out on the water and, uh, you guys go catch some fish now. All right.